So I've had a lot of requests from people to know how to build this wing, so I thought I would just do kind of a quick kind of overview. Um, now this isn't any type of aerodynamic thing or anything like that. This is more how did I get my idea um, on paper and in a way that I could then cut out and build. Um, one of the first things obviously you have to do is pick out an airfoil. Um, there's a specific thickness and length to an airfoil and that's really going to depend on how big you want your plane to be, the thickness of your foam, that kind of stuff. Now the one I decided to go with was the Clark Y. This has been kind of a go-to airfoil for many years because it's fairly easy for modelers to build and in RC planes it works just fine. Also I have flown several Clark Y planes myself. You know, if you've ever flown flight test foam board plane, you probably know how to fly a Clark Y plane. So that familiarity and, you know, having used them was kind of why I decided to go on it. And one of the major reasons, too, from a standpoint of hot cutting is since the bottom is flat, uh, you can get away with only cutting the top. Because when you first start out with um, hot wire cutting, you're, you're going to suck, just like anything you do the first time. Now, if you just want to get good at hot cutting, well then it really doesn't matter. Pick an airfoil and just practice, practice, practice. But I wanted to get some practice and have something that actually flew in the air when I was done. So, you know, I chose this so that I could have less cutting, maybe a little bit of sanding on the front edge to get that nice curve. I also need to kind of give a shout out to you know, how I kind of learned how to do hot wire cutting myself. I'm not an expert, but uh, one of the first places that I saw kind of the hot wire cutting itself, I think, was uh, my geek show. Um, you know, I'll have links to all this down below. But the person that really kind of showed me, you know, made me think that, oh, you know, actually this is doable. It's not that big of a deal. It's just kind of a skill to be learned, and you probably have most of these parts, you know, in your toolbox was uh, Andrew Newton. Um, he's got a really nice playlist. If you even just search hot wire cutting, he has several videos um, that go through the process in different ways for different planes. And if you check out his webpage, he has a list for all the parts. Um, and so I basically am using his recommended parts here. The Clark White airfoil itself is pretty easy to find. You can just search Clark White airfoil on Google Images. Um, there's tons of examples there. Um, or you can just go to the wiki page. It has actually a nice little, you know, wiki about the Clark Y, um, where it came from, why it's being used, and up in the top right there, it actually has the picture you can just grab uh, to use as your template. Now, once we have that picture, we basically need to size it for our plane and for our foam. Now, once I had the airfoil, uh, I already knew that I wanted the wing to be 60 inches. Um, and so I wanted the, the, you know, the airfoil, the, the center cord uh, of the plane where all the parts are going to be. I wanted that to be as thick as possible. And my foam is two inches thick. And so I wanted it to take most of that space with some room above, obviously, for, for cutting. Uh, and so I decided to about go about um, an inch and three quarters. I felt that was you know, a good place to start. It would give me uh, enough room for a battery to sit down inside. So just to keep this simple, this isn't going to be an Inkscape, Inkscape tutorial or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to draw a box and I'm going to make it two inches thick and just drag the airfoil up to it. Um, now if I hold down the control button, um, when I drag this corner it'll keep all proportions the same you won't only stretch up or only stretch right so I'm just gonna stretch it until it gets up to about you know the size that I want I could also go up and type in numbers but I'm just gonna use just keep it simple I'm just gonna stretch it out and then once I have it to the correct thickness for the foam that I want I'm going to just draw a line or a box um, or just measure the distance from the left side to the right side that'll be the cord from the nose to the tail and we'll need to, that to take into our CG calculator to figure out the rest of the dimensions of the plane. Okay now that we have you know our cord uh, we can go into the CG calculator. Now there's several out there this is the one that I've always used I like it it has its own you know plus and minuses 
One of the minuses is that when you switch from uh, millimeter to inches, it kind of freaks out. So I usually just switch it to inches uh, and I just uh, go and zero everything out and just start over. Um, now again, as far as, um, you know, this is not some how to, how to design a plane tutorial. This is just how I got my design. The main reason that we're coming in here is to find the center of gravity. Um, and so I'm just going to put my numbers in here. Um, you know, you can come in here and just play with the numbers and, you know, adjust the sweep. See what that does to the CG, you know, adjust the cord or adjust the tip cord. So I'm just going to put the numbers in here. Uh, and again, center of gravity is the most important thing that I'm trying to get out of this. And then once I know where that center of gravity is, um, that's also going to tell me um, maybe how far I want to cut the motor in to help center of gravity be easier to deal with later. So now that we have our wing specifications, we need to, you know, get it down on paper to start figuring out where the foam needs to be on the table. Um, we're going to make a left and a right side, and we need to make sure that they're as close to the same as possible so that when you put them together, they match up. This is going to make it fly better, more efficient, look better, less sanding, all of that. So, you know, it's very important that we make this a, a repeatable, pro repeatable process, you know. Um, there are two ways that I have done this in the past. There's a third way that I just thought of. You could probably take um, that picture from the CG calculator and take that into a program and size that up and print it out. Um, when I have something that's really, really big, um, I find that it's easier to just get a big piece of paper and a ruler and uh, just m measure the distances out, just kind of draw it by hand. I find that it saves time compared to printing out 20 sheets and taping them together and trimming and all that stuff. Um, but the way I'm going to show you on screen is actually how to just draw this plane out in Inkscape and then you save it as a PDF and you do a poster print which gives you all of the you know the mini pages that you can then assemble together so let's get going I'll show you that okay so the first thing that we want to do is to just draw a box that represents the space that the wing will be in so that we can draw it correctly I'm just going to change it to inches here just so we can work with it now we know that the width of this needs to be 30 inches because the wingspan of the plane is 60 but we're only drawing half so I'm going to set the width to 30 now to figure out the height, that's going to be the wingtip distance plus the sweep distance. That will give us the height. Now the sweep is 17.5 and the wing tips are 7. So that's 23 and a half. I'll just put that in. Okay, so this box then represents our wing. The top left side is going to be the root cord, the center of the wing. The bottom right side is going to be our wing tip. So to figure out first the leading edge line, we know that that's going to go from the tip of the nose, the top of the root cord, to the beginning or the, you know, the front of the wing tip. So the top left point it's going to just be in that top left corner and we don't need to figure out anything there. We need to figure out where the tip of the wingtip is, the front to the leading edge of the wingtip. So to do that, we just need to measure the sweep. So usually I would use a line, but just so you can see it, I'm going to use a box just to represent that distance. I'm just going to draw a box. I am going to align them so they're both at the same starting point at the top uh, let's see this button here I'm gonna take that square I'm going to make it our sweep which is 17.5 inches oh looks like I need to realign them again so let's just realign them okay so if we zoom in right here 
we'll slide that sweep box over right where those points meet that should be the tip of our wingtip so I'm gonna grab the line tool click on that spot and go up to the nose click hit enter that is our leading edge now we need to figure out the trailing edge the trailing edge is going to go from the back of the wing tip to the back of our root cord so we're going to do the same thing let's just take that box we made take it to the other side now we know that the root cord is 15 inches so we'll just change this size to 15 align them both to the top slide that box over so where those two points meet there that is the trailing edge of our root cord so line tool click on that box go down to this corner which is the back of the wingtip click there hit enter and now we can get rid of this box So now there basically is the you know the silhouette of our wing uh, to, to complete that let's just get rid of this box and just draw some lines to complete that shape if you hold down control it'll lock you into you know a vertical only one direction move let's see so hold down control and only lets you go right here. We can clean up that later. Again, this isn't really a Inkscape tutorial. It's just kind of a quick, how did I do this type thing. Again, we'll click on the wingtip, trailing edge. Go to the wingtip, leading edge. Click, hit enter. And then I basically grab all the shapes, hold down Control and G, and that turns that into one complete shape. Now, there's other things you could do here, which I, I did. You could mark your cutout for how wide the propeller is going to be, how far up the motor is going to be. You could draw, put a line in here right where the CG is going to go. Those are all pretty simple things. I recommend you look at any, an Inkscape tutorial. It's a really great program. But what we are going to do is basically save this to a PDF so that we can print it. Because those are all things, too, you can just do by hand later. You don't have to do it in here. We're just going to go to Document Properties. We're just going to position this in the bottom left corner. Because the way Inkscape works is if I save this, it's actually only going to save what is in this boundary here that it says is the document. It doesn't consider things outside of this square as being the document. So let's just go over and put in some numbers that will get the document around that. And then just bring it down until we get it as close as we can just the document isn't ridiculously big okay and we'll just kind of position it in that area go up to file click save as drop down box save it as pdf name it you know whatever you would like to name it then we will go open up that file It should open up in whatever your Adobe Reader program is. And you want to go up to File, Print, and select Poster. And then in the preview, you can see that it's going to print this up uh, in 1, 2, 3, 4, 12 sheets that you'll have to cut and put together fly test style. So that's pretty much how you do it. Um, very simplified version, but that's basically exactly how I got it printed out. Um, now, in the next tutorial, uh, part two, We'll get into the actual um, hardware 
the parts, the electronics for cutting, um, how you figure out where on the table um, you're going to put the foam, marking it so you can flip it over to the other side. So stay tuned for part two.